let us offer our consecration to the Lord. As we continue through this week, this 26th week of Ordinary Time, and we continue through the reading from Zechariah, let us be filled with your Spirit as we look forward to many of the powerful things going on this week, particularly the beginning of the Synod tomorrow, and we celebrate your love in our lives, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is uh, one of the interesting uh, days this week because uh, tomorrow is a unique week. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, uh, a unique day, rather. Yesterday, of course, was the Feast of the Guardian Angels. Today is just one of those regular uh, days in ordinary time, but we're continuing through Zechariah. And in that, um, we're looking at this powerful prophecy that we see. I talk about this a lot, but this is one of the places in the prophecy and the prophecies of the Old Testament that you see a sign that what we understand in the Old Testament is what prophecies we understand are legitimate. They're real. They actually are. So let us look at this particular uh, prophecy. And we're looking at Zechariah chapter 8. And what's happening is the, the prophecy that there will come a day where everyone will go worship the God of Israel in Jerusalem. By the way, I should make a little statement. I got a comment uh, a couple of weeks ago where someone said that they found what I was saying confusing in regards to who was who. And so I made an explanation because, you know, I use the term Hebrews. I use the term Israel. I use the term Judah. I use the term Jews. I call the Hebrews in one part of the Bible, the Jews in another part. And she says, it's very, very confusing. Well, it all has to do with the time. So what we're talking about is the nation of Judah. Remember, after David... Um, and um, there was uh, Solomon, and Solomon began and kind of a civil dissension, and eventually it led to the division of what was the nation of Israel into two countries, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. And Israel eventually disappears. Well, during that time, prior to that time when we were with Moses, they're the Hebrews. Uh, under David, they are Israel, and they're often called throughout the Bible the nation of Israel. They are Israel. Israel was originally named Jacob. Israel, the person, was originally named Jacob, and so he goes by the name Jacob and Israel. He is the grandson of Abraham, the son of Isaac. Uh, so then uh, Israel, and then they are called the nation of Israel. But at the same time, when you're talking about Judah, they are called the nation of Judah, and it's from Judah that we have the word Jews. But it all depends on what time frame we're talking about. And right here, what we're talking about is the people one day will go to worship the God of Judah, the Israel, who is in Jerusalem, which is in the nation of Judah. A little bit more confusing, but it's all, all there. And it's the same Jerusalem that we recognize today, obviously. But what's important there is remember, I've, I, I, I teach this uh, quite a bit, that the idea that the nation, that people would be worshiping the God of the Jews when we're talking about the Old Testament uh, na nations that surrounded the Israel and or the Jews, uh, the pagan nations, Gentile nations, would be absurd. It would be just, it would just literally like saying, and maybe this is an American perspective, so I don't mean to um, offend anyone from uh, the country that's north of us, but it would be like uh, this big prediction coming out. There will come a day when all the people of the world will worship God in Montreal. You go, Montreal? Why Montreal? Now, it would be different if people said there will come a day where everyone will go watch hockey championships in Montreal. Yes, that would make sense because, as we know, uh, Canada is very strong on ice hockey. Um, if you know, for a long time, many American hockey players were actually Canadian. Um, but if people said, you know, you're going to worship the God 
uh, worship the one God in Montreal, people, you know, f- from all countries all over the world go, Montreal? Some of them will go, where's Montreal? And that's the reality. Uh, that's the way it would be looked at. So that has come true. I mean, everyone looks to Jerusalem as the place where people worship the God of the Jews, the God of Israel, the Christian God, who was the God of Israel, and even the Muslim God, who uh, the the famous uh, dome um, dome of the rock, that mosque is built on where they believe that Muhammad uh, ascended into heaven. That that spot also happens to be where the temple was. So all of that is connected. And so the God of the Jews, people are worshiping the God of the Jews in Jerusalem. When this prediction was made by Zechariah, people would go, what? And literally, they'd be like, you know, they could say it wouldn't make sense, but they could say, that's like saying we're all going to worship in Montreal. We're going to talk more on the other side of the break. We'll be right back right after this. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. We're back, and we're looking again at this powerful reading from Zechariah chapter 8. You can check it out in your favorite podcast platform. I'm not podcast platform. In your favorite uh, Bible um, daily daily reading, whatever it's uh, whether it's online, Bible.usccb.org, whether it's published like Magnificat, the Word Among Us, the the Bible Today, or whether it's um, a bound version that you can hold in your hands. Uh, all of these have the reading today, Zechariah 8, 20 to 23. And they're talking about the time that everyone will look uh, towards the God of the Jews and they will worship that God from all over the world and they will go to Jerusalem to do it. And that is that is today. Uh, one of the things, now I've never been to Jerusalem, my voice has. I have been many times, I've been the voice of Terra Santa News. So many times, I'm kind of like the fill-in voice of Terra Santa News. So you'd say, well, that voice sounds familiar. Uh, you'd have to listen to some older broadcasts, but uh, that name sounds familiar. It's me. <laughs> so anyway, yes, but I've never been to Jerusalem. But they tell me that in Jerusalem, you can see flags from all different nations there. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. If Zechariah visited Jerusalem today, he would be, that's what I saw. That's my prophecy. That's exactly what I saw. So this prophecy has come true. And so it's one of many prophecies that are there. People say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how much, show me any of this stuff. Has ever come true? Yeah, there is one. There's a lot of it there, but there is one. And so we recognize that, yes, the God of the Jews is the true God. The God of the Jews is leading people forward. Now, a lot of people today don't believe in the God of the Jews. They believe in in science, for example. And as you know, I'm not going to go into that any further for today, but I, I always talk about anyone who uh, is an atheist um, who does not believe in I'm not... I'm not, you know, shooting you down. I'm not, you know, insulting you. It may come across that way. I don't mean that. But uh, I is basically flat earth thinking because when we understand what the Lord is saying, he's saying that there is so much more of what is there besides what you can see. And we always understand that God is outside of time. So we have this prophecy that says this is what the future is going to look like. And there it is, that the whole world will worship the God of the Jews. And so it's a powerful prophecy that leads us to understand that. Now, I want to say a couple things about tomorrow. Uh, Tomorrow, of course, we're going to focus on it, but tomorrow is the feast of, or the memorial, rather, of St. Francis of Assisi. 
Um, but it's also the first day of the Synod. We're going to talk about what that's all about tomorrow. We've talked the past couple weeks on the other show uh, on WROL, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the voice of St. Anthony Parish. We've talked a few weeks, and it's on the podcast at catholicaudiomedia.com or your favorite podcast platform. Um, but we've talked a few weeks about that Synod. Well, it starts tomorrow. So you can definitely check out some of the coverage that is there um, that that will definitely follow this and check this out. So do understand that that's tomorrow. And on Tuesday nights, which this is Tuesday, so if you ever want to come visit us at St. Anthony Parish on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock, we're right now going through these documents. We're going through what these documents have to say. So that's a pretty powerful thing. You're welcome to come tonight, 7 o'clock p.m. at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. But anyway, so this is a, a powerful thing that's coming up tomorrow. It's a very eventful week this week, and we recognize this within the promise that we see here that this prophecy actually came true, and God is still with us as he has always promised he would be. We'll talk more tomorrow on the Memorial of St. Francis of Assisi. We will see you then. Have a blessed day. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out Catholic TV. Dot com. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at CatholicAudioMedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.